Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Daily Word. Today is Monday, August the 2nd of the year 2021. Glad you could join me for our few minutes together. As you can see, I'm out on my front porch this morning. It is a beautiful morning this morning for the first Monday in the month of August. The birds, the crows, they are noisy this morning. So I'm on the front porch with my cup of coffee, enjoying the beauty of this day before I head to Dayton for... A meeting and a bunch of other things today. Uh, this week is an important week, of course, in the life of the church. You know, we've been doing this National Night Out thing for a couple of years, several years now. And uh, this year, of course, we're transforming our parking lot. And we're going to make the parking lot a big dining room. And we're so excited about the opportunity to just sh- sit down and share in some food and break bread together with our neighbors Look, you're invited to come. You don't have to come work. You can just come eat. You can come uh, share in the fellowship. You don't have to be a member of the church if you're watching this. You just come uh, to our parking lot on Ohio Avenue in Sydney, and you can enjoy pork chops and fresh sweet corn and mashed potatoes and gravy and a roll and and drinks and cookies, homemade cookies, and just enjoy the fellowship with all of us. So we hope you'll join us tomorrow night in all that we have. And reminder that we're going to record our worship for August 22nd on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. You're welcome to come to worship Wednesday night, and we'll be recording the August 22nd worship. And so um, I have a bit of a mixed-up week trying to figure out sermons. So I have this um, for work, for sermons and scripture, I have this working notebook. And so I keep it in order with tabs. Well, this morning early, I messed up my tabs because this week I'm recording the 22nd. Then we'll have worship on the 8th. Then right after the 8th, uh, we're recording the 29th. And then, of course, we'll have the 15th. And so I had to rearrange all of my all of my working notes to make sure that uh, I'm preaching the right sermon as we go along in the next couple of weeks. So the scripture for this morning, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21, we hear these words. Therefore... Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God is making his appeal through us. We, bef- we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to, be, him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And so, for the writer of Corinthians and this message to the church in Corinth, this Scripture takes this decided turn. It's almost as if, you know, the the first half of what we hear and what we know in the gospel is about is about Jesus and about the death and resurrection of Jesus and about our need for a Savior and that we accept this Savior in our life. And so we do that and we <clears throat> we want to live lives accordingly and we we trust that God is present with us and. We talked about yesterday. <clears throat> I thought that was really important yesterday. We talked about what communion means to us and the sacraments and that it's mm-hmm. about remembering, that it's about tradition, that it's about forgiveness of sins, that it's part of our faith journey. And I'd like to think that too, that this idea that when we share the bread and the cup, that it becomes as I said yesterday, part of who we are, and I think what it does, at least for me, is it helps us to mm. inform our living. Forgiveness, tradition, remembering, uh, being this significant part of our faith journey, and, and it becomes this part of who we are, and it moves us on in life, if you will. I'm always, <clears throat> I'm always thrilled and and sometimes amazed and sometimes um, touched in a different way when we when we share the bread and the cup and we sing songs as a reminder um, that this gift that Jesus gave the disciples um, propelled them 
into their next phase of their life and their ministry. I think this is true for us in the, the scripture. If anyone is in Christ, they are now a new creation. A new creation that because we have this relationship with Christ, our life is now informed in a new way. We're transformed in a new way. We are a new creation. The old has passed away. The new has come. Isn't that interesting that while we think about something being far off, and, and often we, we think about, well, because we're a Christian, this is some, some ticket to heaven, where instead I believe that, that this, this calls us, if we're going to be in Christ, that we live as people who are part of a new creation, whose lives are now lived differently, that the old has passed away. It's, it's much like we talked about yesterday. Um, when we take the cup of the covenant, it's for the forgiveness of sins. And when we drink that cup, the old is passed away, and a new thing has happened in our lives. And then we live our lives accordingly, and, and our lives are shaped because of that. The old is passed away. Behold, the new has come. Behold means wake up. Behold, wake up. The new has come in our midst. I mean, we've probably read over this a hundred times, and it's probably something we say that, that we know very well. But here's this idea for us that helps us, I think, in the living of our lives that I think sometimes we have to hold on to. Behold, the new has come, the old has passed away. I think in our lives, what I hear from a lot of people and a lot of the struggles that we have in life are that we hold on to old things. <clears throat> I'm not talking about stuff. I'm not talking about the box that's on my front porch of Christmas decorations that still needs put away. Probably some that need given away or thrown away. I'm not talking about stuff. I'm not talking about you know, the stuff that fills my garage yet that needs put away. We hold on to the old, the old me, the old sin, the old things that, that have held us back in life. We have we've forgotten to let go and to allow God to let the new come in our life. You see, this, this gospel, this story, this sharing uh, reminds us that the old, because of Christ, because we're a new creation, the old has passed away and the new has come. And it comes from the inside. It's an interesting thing that, that you know, when you, like us, you know, when you move to a new house, you have to figure out all the sights and sounds and the things that wake you up at night. It's kind of what happens when we have given our life to Christ. The old passes away, the new comes. It comes from the inside. It's a part of our story of being Christian. Um, we have to live it today. We encounter people's lives today. It's not some far off thing. And I, I wonder for us if that's kind of where we've lost sight of what it means to be Christian. You know, I think, I'm convinced that you know, I'm Christian, and, and I live my life in a certain way, not because I simply want to go to heaven. But I think God calls us to live our lives in a certain way because the kingdom of God, the new creation, is here and now. Hear what it says. We are ambassadors for Christ. God is making God's appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. If we're going to be reconciled, you know, if, if our lives are going to be reconciled and changed, then, then we have to live our lives knowing that the new creation is now here. The new has come today in our midst. Uh, many of us, if you're like me, you know, I said yesterday, when I eat that big piece of bread and I drink of the chalice and I take a big, long drink, for me, um, that's a reminder of forgiveness and that I start over again, that I start fresh. Being an ambassador 
for Christ, being reconciled to God so that around us, others might know of the presence of an almighty God. The old friends has passed away. Behold, wake up. Behold means the new has come. Oh, I think that's such good news for us as we live our lives and as our lives are shaped by the presence of God. But well, if we can live in such a way um, that every day the old passes away and the new comes and the old passes away and the new comes and that that we are then ambassadors for Christ. You know, I think that's my goal for Tuesday night for National Night Out. For however we encounter those who come, that we're just ambassadors for Christ, that we just share the good news, that we just share our love with those around us, that we just offer bread and food and corn and and we just give our lives, not just to our neighbors, you know, but to each other, knowing that this ambassadorship that we've been challenged with is the way that our lives are moved and shaped. And, and I hope that we can take that seriously and that you and I would have the courage to let go of the former things and allow ourselves to be a new creation. So this is a good word. It's a word for us today as we live our lives. I pray that it'll be a word that will inspire you as you live your life today. Hope you'll plan to join us tomorrow night for this exciting National Night Out, Wednesday night for worship at 6 o'clock. And um, know the presence of God and God's love and grace and mercy in your lives. Know of my love for all of you. Um, pray for each other as we travel around today. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day, everyone.